This tiny camera right here is the brand new DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro and it's equipped with a lot of cool features such as a brand new next generation 1 over 1.3 inch image sensor. It has 47 gigabytes of internal storage that I think is pretty cool as well as a bunch of other new cool features that we will dive in. However, as always, the real question is obviously without a doubt whether this camera is actually worth the upgrade or not. Well, my friends, I've been using it a lot for the last few weeks. I filmed a whole bunch of different types of videos with it. And in this video, I want to share with you guys the things that I really liked about it as well as the one thing that I, you know, quite frankly, didn't like. All right, my friends, so before we dive into them big, juicy new updates, then let's first take a look at them smaller upgrades, as well as the build quality and some other uh, cool stuff this camera is, you know, uh, capable of doing. Or is it? Let's see. So the first little thing I find pretty cool about this camera has to be the fact that it has like 47 gigabytes of internal storage. I mean, I've been doing this for almost 10 years and I don't know about you, but personally, I've forgotten SD cards more times than I can count and when that happens, it absolutely sucks. But with this, it's been totally a non-issue. I mean, between me and you, I haven't even put an SD card in. I've just been filming everything on the internal storage and so far it's been great. Now another small update is a four hour extended battery life. Now this is one of those things that looks like pretty good on paper, but in my usage, I have actually felt it. I mean, when I'm out, you know, filming a whole day, I'm not really changing, but I don't, I'm not even sure I have done it. Now, of course I'm filming with a few different cameras, but one of them I'm using a lot is this, and you can really feel that it has a like long lasting battery life. Now, another thing you can of course also do with this camera is to film in 4K up to 120 frames per second. Although you've been able to do it for a few generations, I still think it's quite remarkable that a camera of this size is able to do that. I mean, when I started, I mean, that would not have been possible even with a massive camera, you know? Now, the quality of this footage, in my opinion, is quite good. I mean, I'm filming on it right now, so you can kind of judge by yourself. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. But uh, I'm filming everything more or less in normal because I just want everything to be quick. If you want to, however, you can of course fill in min D log M to get like higher dynamic range and all that good stuff that comes with a log picture profile, but also even put an anti filter on and have correct shutter speed because then you get perfect motion blur. So that is like totally possible. Personally, I just like to use this camera, everything out dog because I don't want to whip it out and film in the moment content. And that's kind of what you've mostly been seeing. And what do you think? All right, so before we together dive into the juicy stuff, <laughs> who doesn't like some juicy stuff, then let's quickly take a look at the build quality and what this camera looks like. I mean, what have they done with it? So as you can see, it looks more or less identical from previous model, except now there's like Action 5 and not Action 4. <laughs> now I do have a dual OLED touchscreen on both the back and you can touch the screen on the front as well. That has a lot of touching. It's nice because when you're vlogging, then you can just switch between the settings on this here. Not bad at all. Not that, I mean, it's incredibly basic. You have an on and off button so you can turn on the camera. If you open here, you can take out the battery and here you can also put an SD card. As well, in this box right here, you can, uh, you know, uh, USB-C. Now the body itself, can go down to 20 meters, so it's waterproof down to 20 meters, which is really cool for those of you who like to dive. If you wanna go deeper, I'm guessing you have to put some sort of housing around it. But down 20 meters, I mean, that's where all of the beautiful colors are. How do I know? I have an advanced diving license. <laughs> so I've uh, a Dolven, do you say that? Diven, Dolven, Diven, dived? I, I've, I've done that. Now I obviously also have a big record button on top and then what you also have, and this is by far what I think is the coolest thing about the Osmo as an action camera, I'm not sure the competitors do this, is that they have this quick release system. So there is like a magnetic thing as well as clips that clip on like this and it's really sturdy. I've used both the Osmo 3, 4 and 5 and never has it clipped off. Now why is this so cool? It's because when you have the little plastic uh, like housing on, you can then take it from horizontal like this and clip it onto vertical seamlessly, which is really cool for all of us that like to create vertical content too, as well as when you're just switching between, you know, whatever mount you want to have, you want to have it here or on the bike 
or to the chest mount from the stick mount, the stick mount, the mount here. Then you can just switch it on like this, boom, and on the next one without always having to screwing it on and off, which is a um, little bit boring when you're doing it many times during the day. Now there's no denying the fact that this camera is filled with a lot of new cool features and it can do like remarkable things and I've seen creators do some crazy things with it. But how like have I personally liked it uh, a lot? I mean I'm not jumping out of helicopters, I don't know about you, maybe you do it all the time and some, some crazy things. I'm just a, like a regular landscape photographer that likes to film my videos. And to me, how I've like really much enjoyed it is in this scenario that I'm doing right now. It's so small and so lightweight and the picture quality is good. So I can just whip it out and film, you know, my vlogs or just behind the scenes things because it's so lightweight and the stable, like, stability of DJI cameras, especially the action cameras is, I am going to say, much better than the competitors. I mean, this is stable and I like the Pocket 3 a lot and it's a remarkably good camera for exactly this scenario. But it's like, in my opinion, the, the flaw with that is that it's a little bit um, fragile. But this is so robust and, and I mean, this is stable enough. This is really, really stable. And the fact that it has the, the mic here, which connects instantly. I just turn on the mic, the transmitter too. Like, I don't have to do anything. I just turn on the camera and this connects. So I get beautiful audio, even in windy condition. I mean, I think that is good. And I can already feel, and after the last week of testing, that this is definitely gonna be a big part of my workflow going forward. I still, of course, gonna use my big camera, but just whipping this out and film a little bit and talk to you guys like this, it's good. All right, so we just got quite a lot of clouds rolling in, like all of a sudden, and it carried with them some rain and also a lot of wind. I'm not sure if the microphone here is picking up the wind, but it got a little bit windy. So I was thinking, let's go in the old house here and uh, talk a little bit more. I have more thoughts in my brain that uh, I know you guys will be like, wow, you serious? <laughs> all right, so how is this camera then handling the transition from going from outdoors to indoors. I mean, uh, it's not too bad. I'm also now using the built-in microphone before you've seen me use the transmitter. So we're testing also out if the sound here is crisp and nice. Obviously it doesn't handle wind as, more, as much as this one, but uh, there's no wind inside, you know. So welcome to the old house. This place was like built in the 1700s, which my Icelandic brain finds pretty damn sick. Anywho, I want to touch on a few things that I think could be better about this camera, but before we do that, then there are some juicy things I've talked about <laughs> that we need to touch on too. For the starters, I mentioned it before, but uh, like this new image sensor allows it to be like up to 13.5 stops of dynamic range, which is absolutely nuts considering this is a tiny camera. Now put to the test, then as you can see here, I'm filming myself and you can also see quite well outdoors. This is in full auto mode and I think this was a pretty nice shot too as well as just the overall image quality is like it's handling some harder situations quite well. On top of that they've also added what they call super night mode. Now I'm not much of a nighttime photographer or filmmaker but the previous version the auction 4 I did try it like quite a lot in low light performance. It was good especially for an action camera and this one is better. Now I live out in the countryside so like I have no street lights to help me out but I was still playing a little bit around with after dark and uh, yeah you can like judge by yourself what you think about this footage that you're seeing. Hmm. It seems like it is cleared up a little bit and not as windy so let's go back outside and just <laughs> cherish the moments we have outside because soon up here in the north uh, it will be very very dark and very very cold so let's cherish those moments and I do have a few more things that I want to share with you about this camera. Now I'm not sure if the weather, you know, is any better. I kind of miss the blue skies that we had, but uh, yeah, whatever. We are outside and it's good times because me and you are together. Anywho, a few other cool things this camera has is for instance, a 360 horizon steady. It basically means that I can run as fast as Forrest Gump and this right here should be really steady. It's also equipped with subject centering and tracking. Personally, I have it like played around with that. <laughs> 
a lot, but uh, I can definitely see in my mind, not with my third eye, but with my two eyes, that it can uh, definitely come in hand and it's a cool feature to have. On top of that, um, you can also now film uh, or record audio with two of these, two separate channels. So you can have two on two different people. Uh, that is really cool. So it is pretty cold outside and I'm starting to feel a little rain on me. So I was thinking like we have a garden house, do you say that? Where you can grow uh, like vegetables and stuff like that here on the property. So let's go inside there and talk a little bit more. Me and you baby, we're gonna have a good time. Welcome to the garden house my friends. Anywho, there is absolutely no question in my mind that the DJI Action 5 is by far the best DJI action camera that they've ever made. I really feel like they've taken all of the things that we've complained about for previous model and uh, listened to us, kind of, <laughs> made it so much better. I'm, I'm incredibly happy. Now, I have friends who tried out the new GoPro and this one, and they say that they like the Osmo 5 more. Now this is not my words, but uh, this is what I'm like, the words on the street in the content creation game. Anywho, it's not perfect. And as always, there's definitely room for a little improvement. Now for starters, I think just like on the previous model that this one, the footage is produced straight out of the camera when you're just filming totally auto with a normal mode and everything. It's a little bit too like digital, a little bit too overly sharpened. Now this is really easy to fix. You can do it by yourself manually, or if you film in D-Log M, which I'm filming right now, it comes pretty nice out of the box. So D-Log M, I, th I think is the way to go. Also, if you're intimidated by color grading, you don't have to be. On DJI's website, you can get a free correction lot, which takes your footage from looking like this to this, which is just a click of a button. So thank you guys for that. Now the second thing I personally would like to have, and it was not on the version three, four, and I was hoping to get into here, but I didn't, is slightly shorter focus distance. On this one, it's quite like far away. I think it's like between 30 and 40 centimeters. So you cannot get it too close. So when you're vlogging, just make sure that you're not too close, which you can forget sometimes because I'm used to having the camera close by. And also I personally like to often get creative with these small cameras and put them in weird places. And like I was doing with the coffee scene before, I just put the camera in the coffee mug. And by the way, that was a little bit gnarly because the coffee comes out boiling hot, but it manages a robust camera. But as you can see, the, the coffee itself is not in focus at all, but I'm in focus behind. Now, I don't know if this is something that is too technical to fix. I'm not an uh, engineer by any stretch of the imagination. I just create videos, but that would be really cool. And anywho, with all that being said, then none of this is a deal breaker for me. I think this is a great little camera and you will definitely see me use it a ton in the future on my channel, this filming all sorts of like different videos. However, what about the Osmo Pocket 3? I mean, that's also an incredible camera and it does offer some features that this one doesn't. Well, my friend, if you wanna find out how good that camera is, then next you need to watch this video right here.